a joint project of the Goethe Institute and Deutsche Welle Radio. The author is Herat Mese. Hello, welcome to episode six of your German language course. To put you back in the picture, journalists Paula and Philip are in a picture postcard castle in Bavaria built by King Ludwig II, who died in 1886. Mysterious things are happening there. As they investigate, Philip and Paula have another very weird encounter. In the palace, they see a figure wearing a glorious coat, a mantle, lined with white fur. Hallo, liebe Hörerinnen und Hörer. Willkommen bei Radio D. Radio D. Die Reportage. Listen now to that encounter. What mantle is the man wearing? And what is it he's claiming? König Ludwig. Entschuldigung. Entschuldigung. Wer sind Sie? König Ludwig. Wie bitte? Ich bin König Ludwig. Philip and Paula are stunned to see the man wearing the mantle of King Ludwig. Das ist doch... Das ist doch... Der Mantel von König Ludwig. Many pictures show Ludwig II with a splendid blue coat lined with white fur draped over his shoulder. Confused, Paula asks the man who he is. Entschuldigung. <coughs> Entschuldigung, wer sind Sie? Imagine the two reporters' astonishment when they hear the man claim to be King Ludwig. König Ludwig. Wie bitte? Ich bin König Ludwig. So, here's this man claiming to be a Bavarian king who's known to have died in 1886. It's really weird. It has to be said, though, that to this day it's not certain just how Ludwig II died. What we do know is that five days before his mysterious death, he was forcefully abducted from Neuschwanstein Castle. He was accused of not attending to his royal duties and just squandering money on building palaces for himself. The Bavarian government had doctors declare him insane, He was taken to another castle in Bavaria near a big lake, the Starnberger See. Radio D. Das Hörspiel. And what happened there? Listen to two versions of what could have happened. Here's the first. Majestät, wie geht es Ihnen? Ach, Dr. Wooden. Das Wasser. Majestät? Nein, nein. Halt, Majestät. Halt! Halt! Was machen Sie denn? 
Now, that's one version of what might have happened. His Majesty the King is strolling on the lake shore with his psychiatrist, Dr. Bernhard von Gooden, who's supposed to keep an eye on him. But the depressed king walks into the water and his doctor can't stop him. Both of them drown in the struggle. What machen Sie denn? Halt! Halt! Hilfe! Hilfe! Well, we won't be looking any more closely into any of the inconsistencies. For example, how the two of them could have drowned in such warm, shallow water and why the king's watch stopped an hour and a half before his doctors did. But they're things that make other people believe the following version. Version 2. What's happening here? Alles klar. Still. Achtung. Und geht und. You'll have heard a shot there, so we're obviously dealing with murder. Many royalist Bavarians believe King Ludwig was murdered, and as long as the king's descendants refuse to let his corpse be examined, stories and speculation will continue to abound. Well, let's leave the mystery now and ask the professor whether at least the language is a bit clearer. Und nun kommt unser Professor. Radio D. Gespräch über Sprache. Well, Professor, would you describe German as a clear language? Hello again, everyone. Well, I would say that as a language, German is certainly clearer than the death of Ludwig II. It's clear, for example, that normally every German sentence contains a verb and a noun or pronoun. Let's concentrate on the verb for now. A verb tells what happens or what is. Kompu claims, for example, to be doing research. Recherchieren. That's the infinitive form of the verb in German. That's the form in which dictionaries list verbs. Recherchieren. 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 Listen to it again and pay particular attention to the ending, en or n. Recherchieren. Recherchieren. In German, verbs change their form depending, for example, on whether one's saying something about oneself or about somebody else. Listen to how one uses a verb to say something about oneself, for example, who one is, or where one is, or what one is. In those cases, the verb is the second word in the sentence. Ich bin Kompu. Ich bin bei Radio D. Ich bin Redakteurin. And the personal form of the verb has to go together with the corresponding personal pronoun. That's right. If someone is speaking about themselves, they have to add the personal pronoun, I, ich. Let's hear it again. Ich bin König Ludwig. If you're asking a question about a person, you use the interrogative or question word who, wer, as you already know. But please note in the following the different forms of addressing someone. First, the courteous personal pronoun for you, sie. 
Entschuldigung. <coughs> Entschuldigung. Wer sind Sie? In the following, listen for the pronoun friends would use for you. Du. Wer bist du denn? Ich bin Kompu. Okay, thanks for now, Professor. You're welcome. Wer bist denn du? Ich bin Kompu. Und wer sind Sie? Ich bin König Ludwig. Wer ist denn das? Das weiß ich nicht. Ich bin ich. Das weiß ich. And listeners, here are the scenes for you once again. Paula and Philip spend quite some time in Neuschwanstein Palace. And they come across a figure wearing a splendid fur-lined coat or mantle of the kind King Ludwig liked and is often pictured in. Entschuldigung. Entschuldigung. Wer sind Sie? König Ludwig. Wie bitte? Ich bin König Ludwig. The king's death is a mystery. Here's one version of what could have happened. Majestät, wie geht es Ihnen? Ach, Dr. Wooden. Das Wasser. Majestät? Nein, nein. Halt, Majestät. Halt! Halt! Was machen Sie denn? Halt! Halt! Hilfe! Hilfe! Or it could have happened like this. Alles klar. Still. Achtung. Und geht vor. Und. In the next episode, we'll be talking less about the death and more about the life of King Ludwig II. Liebe Hörerinnen und Hörer, dann bis zum nächsten Mal. You've been listening to Radio D, a German call. You're listening to Radio D, the radio language course of Redaktion D. A joint project of the Goethe Institute and Deutsche Welle Radio. The author is Herat Mese. And 
and a warm welcome to episode 7 of your German language course, Radio D. Our two reporters, Paula and Philip, have been looking into the mystery surrounding the death of the Bavarian king, Ludwig II. This time they want to tell us about his life, but unfortunately they haven't actually reported in yet. Stimmt nicht. Hier sind drei neue Minidisks von Paula und Philipp. What? Three new Minidisks. Let's play them right away for our listeners. Hallo, liebe Hörerinnen und Hörer. Willkommen bei Radio D. Radio D. Das Hörspiel. As you already know, King Ludwig II lived in the 19th century. He was a melancholic man who loved to be driven through the lonely forests at night, in winter in a sleigh. Imagine a night with a full moon and mountains covered in snow, and listen to what it was King Ludwig loved so much. Ruhig. Ruhig. Der König kommt gleich. Achtung, der König kommt. Ja. Los geht's. Ah. Na, wie schön. Das ist wunderschön. Ich liebe die Natur. Und ich liebe die Musik. Musik von Richard Wagner. It was music King Ludwig loved so much, especially that of his friend Richard Wagner. Und ich liebe die Musik. Musik von Richard Wagner. A sleigh ride. It's like an image from a fairy tale, don't you think? That's one of the reasons why they called Ludwig the fairy tale king. You know, you can still take a sleigh ride like that now, though it might not be quite as romantic as you expect, because it's pretty cold and you drive on the roads. It was better for King Ludwig. He was snuggled up inside a thick fur and could enjoy the nature he loved so much and dream of the music of his friend, Richard Wagner. Ah. Hm. Na, wie schön. Das ist wunderschön. Ich liebe die Natur. Und ich liebe die Musik. Musik von Richard Wagner. But in his youth, when King Ludwig wasn't quite as lonely as he was in adulthood, and also not quite as off his rocker, as you might say, he celebrated wild parties in his palaces with dancing and music and colourful lights. 
And as often as possible, he sought the company of his cousin, Sissy, to whom he had a romantic attachment all his life. Try and imagine a royal feast. What might King Ludwig ask of Sissy? <laughs> Ja, gern, Ludwig. Gern. Entschuldigung, Majestät. Später, später. Kommen Sie, Sissi. Wir tanzen. King Ludwig asks the beautiful Sissi, the later Empress of Austria, to dance. Sissi, tanzen wir. Kommen Sie, Sissi, wir tanzen. <laughs> and he wants no one to disturb them, because Sissi enjoys dancing with him, and it would be discourteous to keep her waiting. Sissi, tanzen wir. Ja, gern, Ludwig, gern. And when King Ludwig wanted to be quite alone with Sissy, he'd invite her to dinner in one of his palaces. Now, you're probably wondering how one could be alone for dinner in such a big palace. Well, at his Linderhof palace, the king had a special table device built. And when Sissy sees it for the first time, she's quite amazed. Can you imagine what kind of construction this table, Tisch, might be? Uh, Essen und kein Tisch? Wie geht das, liebster Ludwig? Wo ist der Tisch? Moment, Moment. Was ist denn das? Ein Tisch, liebe Sissi. <lacht> das sehe ich, aber woher kommt der Tisch? Von unten. Von unten? Ja. Schauen Sie mal. Jetzt ist er weg. Ich klingele, der Tisch kommt. Ich klingele, der Tisch verschwindet. Und wie geht das? Das ist eine besondere Konstruktion. Maybe you've seen in the theater how people or things are lowered out of sight. And that's the kind of machinery King Ludwig had built for himself. But back to Sissy. Having been invited to dinner, she is understandably quite surprised to see no table when she enters the dining hall in Linderhof Palace. Uh, essen und kein Tisch? Wie geht das, liebster Ludwig? Wo ist der Tisch? Well, recognizing a table is not that hard. So when Sissy asks, what's that? She gets the bemused reply from the king, a table. Was ist denn das? Ein Tisch, liebe Sissy. It's not the table as such she means, of course. She wants to know where it's come from so suddenly. The answer from below isn't really much of an explanation. <laughs> das sehe ich, aber woher kommt der Tisch? Von unten. So as not to have so many servants hovering around him and his dinner guests, Ludwig ordered a special construction built. On the ground floor was the kitchen. The table was laid there. Then the king rang a bell, and the laid table was raised up through a trap door in the floor of the dining room. Ich klingele. Der Tisch kommt. And when dinner was over, King Ludwig rang again, and the table was lowered back to the kitchen. It simply disappeared. Ich klingele. Der Tisch kommt. Ich klingele. Der Tisch verschwindet. When she asks how that works, Sissy gets only the general explanation that this is a special construction, which she has no doubt figured out for herself. 
Und wie geht das? Das ist eine besondere Konstruktion. Maybe the king didn't know any more about such a complex bit of technology either. We just don't know. And it was at that table that Paula and Philip met the man wearing Ludwig's mantle and claiming to be the king. Let's try again to get in touch with them. Hello? Hallo, Philip? Paula? Do you hear me? Ja, da sind wir wieder. Noch einen Moment, bitte. Ah, you heard them. You'll have to wait a little longer, I'm afraid. Well, we'll use the time to talk to our professor, shall we? Und nun kommt unser Professor. Radio D. Gespräch über Sprache. What are we dealing with this time? We're going to look some more at verbs. There's any amount to say about them. Listen to the verbs again in the infinitive form. For example, to come, common, and to love, lieben. Kommen. Lieben. But our listeners already know that verbs change their form. Right. More precisely, the endings attached to the roots of verbs change. First, hear the verb root, and then the infinitive with the ending, en, n. Komm. Kommen. Lieb. Lieben. Now you know the ending of the infinitive, en, spoken, n. What other endings do you hear in the following example? Kommt. Liebt. Well, I heard a t. Perfect. Instead of en, sounding n at the end of the verb, there's a t if one talks about a person, for example, King Ludwig. Der König kommt gleich. Achtung, der König kommt. And if one's talking about oneself, that is, in the I form... Then the verb ending also changes. Hmm. Which ending do you hear in the following example? Liebe. Ich liebe. Ich liebe die Natur. When ich, that is, I, is used... The ending has to be E. Yes, uh, that's right. Most of the time, anyway. And next time we meet, you'll hear how the conversation between our reporters and the man who claimed to be King Ludwig continued after it was unfortunately interrupted. See you then. Liebe Hörerinnen und Hörer, bis zum nächsten Mal. You've been You're listening to Radio D, the radio language course of Redaktion D. A joint project of the Goethe Institute and Deutsche Welle Radio. The author is Herat Mese. Glad you're with us for episode 8 of your German language course from Radio D. Remember the man our reporters Paula and Philip met when researching mysterious goings-on in a castle in Bavaria? He actually had the cheek to claim he was King Ludwig, who died in 1886. Unfortunately, we've lost contact with our two reporters, but we're not giving up on trying to reach them. Schon passiert. Kontakt zu Philipp und Paula ist da. Ah, fantastic. I can't wait to hear how the conversation between our reporters and the man in the castle is going to continue. Hallo, liebe Hörerinnen und Hörer. Willkommen bei Radio D. Radio D. Die Live-Reportage. As you listen, try to remember all the things the man says he loves. He tells us about four different things. Which ones? Ich bin König Ludwig. König Ludwig ist tot. 
Aber ich lebe. Was machen Sie hier? Hören Sie die Musik. Musik von Wagner. Ich liebe die Musik von Richard Wagner. Sie sind König Ludwig? Aber ja. Ich bin König Ludwig. <lacht> Und ich liebe den Mantel von König Ludwig. Und ich liebe die Musik. Und ich liebe die Natur. Und ich spiele. Und ich spiele. <lacht> Hallo? Ist da jemand? The man, whom I'm sure you understood, loves music. The music composed by Richard Wagner. Ich liebe die Musik von Richard Wagner. And he loves nature. Und ich liebe die Natur. And this man also loves King Ludwig and the king's coat. Ich liebe König Ludwig. Und ich liebe den Mantel von König Ludwig. Well, I don't know about you, listeners, but I find all of this a bit bizarre. Here's a man who loves King Ludwig, while at the same time claiming that he is King Ludwig. Sie sind König Ludwig? Aber ja. Ich bin König Ludwig. Obviously, Philip tells the man that King Ludwig is dead. König Ludwig ist tot. But the man just ignores that and insists that he's alive. Aber ich lebe. Maybe the last word the man says is a clue to clearing all this up. He says, I play. Ich spiele. Und ich spiele. Und ich spiele. <laughs> Paula and Philip have left the castle again. The man suddenly vanished. Philip has driven to Munich and Paula is back in the Radio D office in Berlin. Waiting for her there is a very inquisitive Eihan. He wants to know all about what went on in Neuschwanstein Palace. But before Paula can tell him, she hears an advertisement that makes her prick up her ears. What's being advertised in the spot? Radio D. Werbung. Hallo, Eihan. Hallo, Paula. Wie war's in Neuschwanstein? König Ludwig. Das Musical. Moment bitte, Eihan. König Ludwig. Die Sehnsucht nach dem Paradies. Hören Sie die Musik? Musik von Wagner. Ich liebe die Musik von Richard Wagner. König Ludwig. Das Musical. Das ist ja interessant. Wie bitte? Das ist interessant? Ein Werbespot? The advertisement is for a musical about the life and death of King Ludwig II. It premiered in 2001. A big theater was specially built for it at a beautiful lake opposite Neuschwanstein Castle. But that's not all that interests Paula. Das ist ja interessant. Wie bitte? Das ist interessant? Ein Werbespot? The thing that interests Paula about this ad is the voice she's just heard in it, because she remembers it exactly. And only now the penny drops about what the man in the castle meant by I play. Let's hear him say it again. Do you also see the connection? <laughs> Ich liebe König Ludwig 
Und ich liebe den Mantel von König Ludwig. Und ich liebe die Musik. Und ich liebe die Natur. Und ich spiele. Und ich spiele. <lacht> Well, the connection is... Oh, no, look, listen to Paula being very annoyed at herself. The solution lies in the verb to play, spielen, the root form of which is spiel. Oh, nein, bin ich blöd. Die Stimme, natürlich. Ich kenne die Stimme. Der Mann ist Schauspieler. Oh, Philipp, sind wir blöd. The man Paula and Philip interviewed in the castle is an actor. Der Mann ist Schauspieler. Paula has recognized his voice, Stimme. Die Stimme, natürlich. Ich kenne die Stimme. The actor plays King Ludwig in the musical and his voice is being used to advertise it on the radio. Simple, isn't it? Anyway, Paula thinks she's pretty stupid not to have noticed right away. Oh, nein, bin ich blöd. Ah, oh, poor Paula. But we can't help her, so it's over to the professor now. Und nun kommt unser Professor. Radio D. Gespräch über Sprache. The actor loved many things, and we're interested, of course, in whom or what he loved. We'll look at that at the language level, at complements to verbs, in fact. The actor loved King Ludwig and music, for example. Ich liebe König Ludwig. Ich liebe die Musik. In the example, King Ludwig and music are the complements to the verb to love. More precisely, they're accusative complements, or objects. The accusative complement stands after certain verbs. So that means the verb to love always needs an accusative complement. That's right. Ah. At least if the sentence is to be grammatically correct. Think, for example, of the verb to know, kennen. There you'll also want to know whom or what one knows. Ich kenne die Stimme. Die Stimme, natürlich. Ich kenne die Stimme. But we also want to know who knows something. Certainly, and that involves the nominative complement or the subject. In German, nearly every verb needs a nominative complement, a subject. That might, for example, be the personal pronoun, I, ich. Ich kenne die Stimme. Often the nominative complement is also the pronoun that, das. Das ist ja interessant. Das ist ja interessant. Or the nominative complement is a noun like King Ludwig, or the man, der Mann. König Ludwig ist tot. König Ludwig ist tot. Der Mann ist Schauspieler. Der Mann ist Schauspieler. Thanks for that, Professor. My pleasure. You can hear the scenes again now. First, the conversation with the man in the castle. König Ludwig ist tot, aber ich lebe. Was machen Sie hier? Hören Sie die Musik. Musik von Wagner. Ich liebe die Musik von Richard Wagner. Sind König Ludwig? Aber ja, ich bin König. 
König Ludwig. <lacht> Ich liebe König Ludwig und ich liebe den Mantel von König Ludwig und ich liebe die Musik und ich liebe die Natur und ich spiele und ich spiele. Hallo? Ist da jemand? Paula hears a radio advertisement that makes a lot of things clear to her. Radio D. Werbung. Hallo, Ayan. Hallo, Paula. Wie war's in Neuschwanstein? König Ludwig. Das Musical. Moment bitte, Ayan. König Ludwig. Die Sehnsucht nach dem Paradies. Hören Sie die Musik? Musik von Wagner. Ich liebe die Musik von Richard Wagner. König Ludwig, das Musical. Das ist ja interessant. Wie bitte? Das ist interessant? Ein Werbespot? Paula realizes that the man is an actor. Oh nein, bin ich blöd. Die Stimme, natürlich. Ich kenne die Stimme. Der Mann ist Schauspieler. Oh, Philipp, sind wir blöd. Next time we're together, you'll hear what Philipp experienced while Paula was back at the office. Liebe Hörerinnen und Hörer, bis zum nächsten Mal. You've been Welcome to episode 9 of your German language course, Radio D. You may remember that Paula, our young Radio D journalist, has found out something very important. A man pretending to be King Ludwig is only an actor playing the king in a musical. Paula's first response is to be cross with herself, but how else does she react? Philipp, was machst du? Wo bist du? Bitte, geh ans Telefon, bitte. Paula, ich verstehe nichts. Ich verstehe überhaupt nichts. Du verstehst nichts? Ach. Sag mal, was war in Neuschwanstein? Paula's first reaction is to try and phone Philip. It's engaged, though, as the busy tone may tell you. Philip, was machst du? Wo bist du? Bitte, geh ans Telefon, bitte! Paula hasn't had a chance yet to tell her colleague Eihan what happened to her and Philip in Neuschwanstein Castle. So no wonder Eihan doesn't understand anything. Paula, ich verstehe nichts. Ich verstehe überhaupt nichts. It's too bad he said that, though, because it makes Paula even more furious. But because he really would like to be filled in, Eihan asks again, gingerly, what went on in Neuschwanstein. Du verstehst nichts? Ach! Sag mal, was war in Neuschwanstein? But Eihan is told nothing. So, we won't miss anything and we can focus now on Philip. From Neuschwanstein, Philip drove about 125 kilometers to Munich. He went into a cafe there and found an advertisement in a newspaper that he's very interested in. Well, you already know what Philip read in the paper because you've heard it as a radio ad. So what's new for you? So, und für Sie ein Kaffee? Bitte. 
Danke. Oh, das ist ja interessant. König Ludwig, die Sehnsucht nach dem Paradies, das Musical. Eine Tour von München nach Neuschwanstein. Unsere Telefonnummer. Das mache ich sofort. You already know that there's a musical on about King Ludwig. It's called Yearning for Paradise. What's new to you is that a tour is offered from Munich to Neuschwanstein Castle. Eine Tour von München nach Neuschwanstein. Philip rings the firm offering the package and makes a reservation for himself. In the Berlin head office of Radio D's current affairs unit, Ihan has, of course, noticed that Philip isn't back. He thinks that maybe he'd talk to him about what happened in Neuschwanstein Castle. So, meaning no harm and sounding almost disinterested, Ihan asks about Philip. Wo ist eigentlich Philip? In München. Nein. Im Stau. Philip ist im Stau. Paula thinks Philip is in Munich. Wo ist eigentlich Philip? In München. But Kompu contradicts her. Kompu is Radio D's talking computer. It's looked quickly into the mailbox and it knows what none of us know yet, that Philip is stuck right in the middle of a traffic jam. Nein. Im Stau. Philip ist im Stau. So, Philip is stuck in a tailback on the motorway, just like all the other tourists riding buses from Munich to the musical. Hallo, liebe Hörerinnen und Hörer. Willkommen bei Radio D. Radio D. Die Reportage. As you can probably imagine, there are tourists from various countries on the bus with Philip. He's been recording them. What languages do you recognize? German's one of them. Ein Stau? Na super. Oh, what happened? Um, do you want something to drink, darling? Oh yes, my darling. Du hast Hurra, bitte, Schau mal, ist das nicht toll? Gibt es hier eine Toilette? Lots of tourists visit attractions like Neuschwanstein Castle, foreigners and Germans. Perhaps you heard some English or French or Japanese. Well, you probably understood the German speakers. One of them asks whether there's a toilet. Gibt es hier eine Toilette? And Philip is anything but pleased about the traffic jam. Ein Stau? Na super. But since he's stuck, Philip makes use of the time to ask some of the tourists in the bus why they want to see the musical. The first two answers by foreigners are in an amusing hodgepodge of German and their own languages. What do the tourists expect from the musical? Grüß Gott, ich bin Redakteur bei Radio D. Sie fahren zum Musical. Warum? Oh, das ist wonderful. Oh la la, das ist sicher très amusant. Scusi, ich habe nichts zu verstehen. The tourists are looking forward to the performance. 
The first woman thinks it's bound to be wonderful, which sounds similar in German. Wundervoll. Oh, das ist wonderful. The second woman imagines it's going to be very amusing. She uses the French word amusant, which also sounds similar in German. Amusant. Oh la la, das ist sicher très amusant. Philip begins by greeting the tourists in Bavarian dialect, saying Grüß Gott, which is what they say in southern Germany instead of Guten Tag. Then he tells them he's a reporter and asks why the tourists are travelling to the musical. Grüß Gott, ich bin Redakteur bei Radio D. Sie fahren zum Musical. Warum? The tourist he speaks to last excuses himself and says that he doesn't understand. He says so in German that isn't quite correct, but Philip does understand him, and you probably do too. Scusi, ich kann nichts verstehen. And just why that wasn't a hundred percent correct, you'll find out now from our professor. Und nun kommt unser Professor. Radio D. Gespräch über Sprache. So, Professor, what was wrong with what the last tourist said? Well, we did understand that he doesn't understand anything. Scusi, ich kann nichts verstehen. Did the tourist mispronounce the word nothing, nichts? No, in everyday German it's often said like that. Oh. But compare the following two sentences and pay attention to the positioning of the negation, nothing, nichts. Ich verstehe nichts. Ich nix verstehen. Ah, oh, got it. The negation with the word nichts has to come after the verb. Paula, ich verstehe nichts. Ich verstehe überhaupt nichts. Right, and there's something else, of course, that our listeners already know. In German, verbs are conjugated, and the verb ending for the first person, ich, is mostly an e. One doesn't just use the infinitive. Well, thanks for that, Professor. And now, just for you, dear listeners, here's the nothing rap. Nichts, nichts. Ich verstehe nichts. Ich verstehe überhaupt nichts, überhaupt nichts, nichts. Hä? Hä? Ich verstehe, hä? Ich verstehe überhaupt nichts, überhaupt nichts. Hä? Hm, nichts, hm, nichts. Ich verstehe nichts. Ich verstehe überhaupt nichts, überhaupt nichts. Hä? Überhaupt nichts. Überhaupt nichts. Überhaupt nichts. Well, I hope you understood a bit more than I have. You can hear some of those scenes again now. First, let's hear Paula getting annoyed. Philip, was machst du? Wo bist du? Bitte, geh ans Telefon, bitte. Paula, ich verstehe nichts. Ich verstehe überhaupt nichts. Du verstehst nichts? Ach. Sag mal, was war in Neuschwanstein? The bus Philip has taken to the musical is stuck in traffic. Philip uses the time to record background sound and voices. Ein Stau? Na super. Oh, what happened? Um, do you want something to drink, darling? Oh yes, my darling. 
Tu as faim? ほら見てごらんすごいじゃない。じゃあお前一冊にしとる。Gibt es hier eine Toilette? Philip wants to know why the tourists are traveling to the musical. Grüß Gott, ich bin Redakteur bei Radio D. Sie fahren zum Musical. Warum? Ah,、oh, das ist wonderful. Oh la la, das ist sicher très amusant. Scusi, ich kann nichts verstehen. In the next episode, you'll get to know another important character in this radio language course. Well, actually, you have met her briefly, but you'll hear more then. Liebe Hörerinnen und Hörer, bis zum nächsten Mal. You've been listening to Radio D. A German course of the Goethe Institute and Deutsche Welle Radio. Joint project of the Goethe Institute and Deutsche Welle Radio. The author is Herat Mese. And a warm welcome to episode ten of your German language course, Radio D. You may remember how the journalist Philip got stuck in a motorway traffic jam with some other tourists. He was travelling by bus to a musical about the life and death of the Bavarian king Ludwig II. Well, every tailback has to end sometime, and so the bus eventually does get to the theatre. Philip goes first into a restaurant that belongs to it, and he meets a man there whom he knows quite well already. Hallo, liebe Hörerinnen und Hörer. Willkommen bei Radio D. Radio D. Die Reportage. Listen to what Philip finds out only now, and what does he ask the man? Ich habe Hunger, einen Riesenhunger. Das Musical ist wirklich wunderbar. Ja klar, ich spiele ja König Ludwig. Nein, das glaube ich nicht. Die Stimme, natürlich. Ich kenne die Stimme. Das ist doch. Entschuldigung, ich bin Redakteur bei Radio D. Bekomme ich ein Interview? Na gut. Ach, danke. Erstmal grüß Gott, König Ludwig. Majestät, bitte. Grüß Gott, Majestät. Guten Appetit, Majestät. <lacht> Ach bitte. Ich bin nicht König Ludwig. Ich bin nicht Ihre Majestät. Ich bin Schauspieler. Ich weiß, Majestät. <lacht> Prost. Philip introduces himself as a reporter from Radio D, and he asks the man for an interview. Entschuldigung, ich bin Redakteur bei Radio D. Bekomme ich ein Interview? And this is how it happened. Philip goes into the restaurant because he's hungry, very hungry, as hungry as a giant, in fact. Ich habe Hunger, einen Riesenhunger. In the restaurant, he hears someone at the next table say that the musical is wonderful, and then someone else has the audacity to say that it's got to be wonderful because he plays King Ludwig. Pretty full of himself, isn't he? Ja klar, ich spiele ja König Ludwig. And now the penny drops with Philip, like it did with Paula. He realizes that the man in the castle was the actor playing King Ludwig, 
You, of course, listeners, already know that. But Philip responds differently from Paula, who was very cross with herself for not having twigged earlier. Philip and the actor keep on playing the game. First, Philip addresses him as King Ludwig, who then insists he be addressed as Majesty. But in the end, he explains that he's neither Ludwig nor a Majesty and admits that he's an actor. <laughs> Ach, bitte. Ich bin nicht König Ludwig. Ich bin nicht Ihre Majestät. Ich bin Schauspieler. And Philip raises a glass with His Majesty. Ich weiß, Majestät. <laughs> Prost! So now both Radio Day journalists, Paula and Philip, know what really went on inside the castle. But neither knows that the other one knows. Maybe their colleague Ihan will also understand sometime. Anyway, as fast as he can, Philip heads back to the Radio Day Current Affairs Office in Berlin. He'll meet a surprise visitor there, an uninvited visitor, but you already know the voice. Listen to what happens in the office. How do the reporters respond to the guest? Hallo, Paula. Stell dir vor, der Mann im Schloss ist Schauspieler. Wie bitte? Wer ist das denn? Eine Eule. Das siehst du doch. Und was macht die Eule hier? Das weiß ich nicht. Sag mal, wo bin ich hier? Bin ich bei Radio D oder im Zoo? Hallo. Was machst du hier? Wie heißt du? Eule. Du bist eine Eule. Okay, aber wie heißt du? Na gut, du heißt ab jetzt ähm, Eulalia, okay? Und äh, woher kommst du? Ich sage nur von König Ludwig. Well, are we going to believe the owl? King Ludwig loved swans, but I don't know anything about owls. The owl must have been in the castle somewhere and then flown unnoticed with Paula to the Radio Day office. But we were going to work on the response of the reporters. Let's listen again more closely. When Philip hears the voice of the owl and sees it flying about, he asks who that is. And because Paula is naturally also puzzled, she answers rather cheekily, Don't you know an owl when you see one? Wie bitte? Wer ist das denn? Eine Eule. Das siehst du doch. And a cheeky answer, of course, prompts a cheeky response. Philip's irritated and he asks Paula back whether he's at Radio D or in the zoo. Sag mal, wo bin ich hier? Bin ich bei Radio D oder im Zoo? Ihan, though, doesn't seem to be in the least put off by an owl in the office, nor by the fact that it talks. But maybe he's just feigning indifference. Anyway, he asks it straight out what it's doing in their office, and when it doesn't answer, he asks it for its name. Hallo. Was machst du hier? Wie heißt du? Eule. Du bist eine Eule. Okay, aber wie heißt du? And because the owl is nameless, Ihan invents a fantasy name for it, Eulalia, because he likes the sound of it. And it also sounds a bit like the German word for owl, Eule. Na gut, du heißt ab jetzt ähm, Eulalia, okay? The three journalists reacted quite differently. Philip is a bit irritated, Ihan is amused, and what about Paula? Have you noticed that she only acknowledges that there's an owl in the office, but otherwise conspicuously holds back? Maybe she senses that from now on Eulalia is going to be around her quite a lot. Well, 
Well, it's evening now, and it's time for Josefina to clean the Radio Day current affairs room. You can imagine her surprise when she finds an owl in there. Have a listen to the scene. What do you think Josefina excuses herself for? Shh. Hilfe! Wer ist das denn? Eulalia. Was macht die Eule hier? Sie ist einfach hier. Bin ich bei Radio D oder im Zoo? Störe ich? Oh, Entschuldigung. Du verstehst alles? Ich bin klug. Und weise. Und ich bin Josephine. Realizing that Eulalia can not only speak but apparently understands everything too, Josephine excuses herself. Oh, Entschuldigung, du verstehst alles? Eulalia's question as to whether she is bothering anyone shows Josephine that she understands everything. And Eulalia doesn't miss an opportunity to point out that she's both smart and wise. Ich bin klug und weise. So, is this the start of a beautiful friendship? Well, we can't know that just yet, and probably neither can the two of them. So, let's leave them to it and listen instead to what the professor has to tell us. Und nun kommt unser Professor. Radio D. Gespräch über Sprache. Hello again. A talking owl in a newsroom? That is a bit puzzling, of course. And so Paula can't answer Philip's question. Let's hear again how she answered him. Und was macht die Eule hier? Das weiß ich nicht. We're dealing here with the negation word not, nicht. That's it. Please listen for the word nicht, which in German follows the verb. Das weiß ich nicht. I don't know. Das weiß ich nicht. When Philip hears the voice of the actor, he's incredulous. Nein, das glaube ich nicht. Nicht, as always, follows the verb. Nein, das glaube ich nicht. Okay, so nicht follows verbs, but it's not always at the end of a sentence, is it? I didn't say it was. Oh. There are compliments that follow nicht. Here are two examples. Philipp ist nicht da. Ich bin nicht König Ludwig. And is there some kind of rule about that? There is, but I don't want to go into detail. I'd only like to say for the time being the following. Accusative compliments such as das or stimme always come before the word nicht. Das weiß ich nicht. Ich kenne die Stimme nicht. Well, thanks for that, Professor. It was my pleasure. And before we go, you can hear again how the owl got its name. Hallo, Paula. Stell dir vor, der Mann im Schloss ist Schauspieler. Wie bitte? Wer ist das denn? Eine Eule. Das siehst du doch. Und was macht die Eule hier? Das weiß ich nicht. Sag mal, wo bin ich hier? Bin ich bei Radio D oder im Zoo? Hallo. Was machst du hier? Wie heißt du? Eule. Du bist eine Eule. Okay, aber wie heißt du? Sis. 
Na gut. Du heißt ab jetzt ähm, Eulalia, okay? Und äh, woher kommst du? Ich sage nur von König Ludwig. Well, in the next episode, Josefina gets a bit chummier with Eulalia, and you'll learn some more about the meaning of her name. Liebe Hörerinnen und Hörer, bis zum nächsten Mal. You've been 